Good evening, everyone. Good evening once more. I hope we are doing well. Uh, by all means, uh, this is Mazes, okay, speaking to us. Uh, for those of you who joined me this evening, as usual, I would want to know where you are joining me from. Um, as it is today, we will see, um, you know, we look into a couple of things this evening. I think uh, we are still trying to connect on um, Facebook. I don't know what's happening on Facebook. I am having issues with Facebook. So um, those of us who are joining me from Facebook, bear with me. I don't know. Let me actually check if I'm on Facebook, but I do not see any reason why it should be because, oh, okay, hold on. We've lost connectivity to Facebook, just bear with me. I would um, see if we can connect back to authenticate the API to Facebook. So let's see if we can authenticate the FP, um, FPI. API to Facebook. You know, we are a dotted people. Oops. Okay. So, sadly, Facebook, I will say, unfortunately, you're very unlikely to join this um, conversation this evening. Sadly, Facebook, I can't help. So everyone on Facebook, you know what you're going to do? Many of you who are here, do me a favor. You can, let's take the link from uh, YouTube and share on Facebook. Uh, maybe that way we can invite them to join on, on YouTube. But um, it's not my making. I'm sorry about that, but uh, it is... You know, sometimes technology would definitely tell you that uh, it is still technology. So before I start, I will say good evening once more to everyone watching me. <laughs> Something very interesting played out a couple of hours ago. Really, really interesting. Uh, the South African president, Cyril Ramaphosa, um, he, you know, he got a shock of his life today in Cape Town, South Africa, when suddenly he stood up to address people who have been sitting, um, you know, waiting for him to basically do his uh, thing at the Transnet National Port Authority, you know, uh, today. So he stood up and he started. He realized <laughs> they've done a smart one on him and uh, they've stolen his iPad. And he was like, where's my iPad? He, he freaked out. <laughs> oh, Ramaphosa, where is he? So I, I, sh I shared this video with us and he freaked out. He was like, where's my iPad? Where's my iPad? Look, watch it. Somebody stole my iPad. <laughs> Somebody decided that they want to dispossess me of my iPad. That's a president. So I want that. Listen, for those of you who do not know Ramaphosa, Ramaphosa is the president of South Africa. You know, you can imagine with all the security around him, man, some, peop some, people, some people really get lever, you know. With all the security around the president, they were able to steal, steal his uh, iPod. It's it was indeed honestly it was indeed funny. So let's let's go. Ahead. Can I have my iPad, please? He's begging. <laughs> the president is begging. Can so they stole it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. He's in shock. Hmm? I had my iPad. Is it short?
So why did you know where they took my iPad to? <laughs> this is the problem of always handing out your gadgets to other people. Mm. It's always best that I should keep all these things with me all the time. Mr. President, stop lamenting. <laughs> I had my iPad. I had it in my hand. It's gone. They've lost it, it seems. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't help but laugh. Um, you know the way. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help but laugh the way he was. Um, <laughs> the way he was lamenting. I lost my iPad. I was sorry. We know you lost your iPad. He was basically uh, lamenting. I lost my iPad. I lost my iPad. <laughs> and some of you in the comment section, and some of you are so mean. How can you be this mean? You're saying that uh, he lost his iPad as a result of effect of the vaccine. No, no, come on. Uh, someone said it's a memory loss. Uh, well, at least if it's someone we, you and I know in Nigeria, he would probably say to, you know, ah, I cannot find my iPad. If I can't find my iPad, what do I do? And we say, Mr. President, we cannot find your iPad too. And probably you hear something like this. Okay. Whoever took my iPad, maybe you have to accommodate them because they are I have brothers. So if we have to accommodate them because they are our brothers, then uh, then we should be good, you know. But it's one of those things that in a society actually it's 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 really sad. Basically, I think uh, that must be said. It's sad that something like that happened in a you know a president who just lose his iPod just like that. So I'm basically trying to invite those of us on Twitter, Facebook, and Facebook. For some reason, I'm only able to stream on YouTube. So Bear with me just a couple of seconds, multitasking. So, again, uh, I hope the president of South Africa finds his iPad, you know, because that iPad is needed. It's 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 not good for a president to lose his uh, <laughs> iPad, and he was damn damn confused. So, people, there is good news today. The good news is very simple that uh, Farouk Lawan has been jailed for seven years. You remember him? Many of you, maybe if you're too young, you might not. When Good Luck, Jonathan, Good Luck Ebera Jonathan took over in 2010-11, he, they, he constituted this uh, panel to look into the fuel subsidy round-tripping fraud. And uh, Farouk Lawan was in the National Assembly as a House of Rep member, and he headed the committee that uh, actually looked into that um, scandal. And and um, the company of Otedola, the one you call um, Ote Dollar, you know, the company of Otedola was. Uh, somewhat fingered, not indicted, but fingered. Now, I still have those videos. I tell people, many of us keep records. 
So, um, you know, at the end of the day, he went into, he called with Tadala to give him, uh, I think that was about half a million dollars. These things are not made up, $500,000. But Tadala probably, you know, playing smart, planted camera to record him. If you still remember, or you're too young, you can no longer remember, I will refresh our memories this evening. So that we'll see, if you look at when that case started and where we are today, you may find out where some people are angry that the judicial judiciary in Nigeria appear to be too slow, too slow. And again, too slow for our liking because it's damn too slow. Honestly, damn too slow. But having said that, let me quickly see if I can pull up the uh, report from um, Premium Times that actually looked into, or rather reported that, because that's the, the judgment was delivered today anyway. So let me quickly see. But for some reason, my internet is blinding. It's effing slow. Okay. Let's see if you can if you can see me. So that's that's it. So that's um, let me expand it a little bit. Yeah. So that's him here. That's his face. So Farouk Lawan jailed jailed for seven uh, jailed seven years. Uh, for taking 500 million, 500,000 bribe, that is dollars, from millionaire Femi Otedola, you know? And, uh, and, <clears throat> and the news reads, count one of the charges is not based on the suspicion, but on credible evidence. The defendant, Mr. Lawan, corruptly asked for 3 million and received a 500 bribe in two trenches from Otodela, he was denying it. So that's why it is always good to keep evidence. He denied it, but there were video evidences showing exactly that he did. And without wasting time, what I'm gonna do this evening is to, you know, let us recap these videos. The federal government, the federal uh, capital territory Abuja uh, uh, High Court in Apo Abuja has sentenced a former federal lawmaker, Farouk Lawan, to seven years imprisonment for taking bribe while serving as a chairman of the defunct House of Rep Ad Hoc Committee investigating the fraud around fuel subsidy in 2012, as I said before. Now, Angela Otaluka, the trial judge, handed down the verdict in, a, in an hour's long verdict on Tuesday, that is today. Now let's let me let me go back and refresh our memories on what is actually happening here, because the guy, in as much as it's 2012, I mean this is this is this is 20, 2021. So we have this is about 11 years that this case been going on. 11 good years this case has been going on. So you can you know that would tell you. <clears throat> No, that's, um, no, it was not GJ. No, 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 I didn't mean to say that it was uh, Good Luck Jonathan, but that was instituted under his governance. Jonathan was the president then. That's, you know, the House of, um, the House of Reps, basically based on the cry of the Nigerians, uh, you know, uh, did the need for. So let's look at how channels report as when, Chamberlain, no, not Chamberlain, when uh, Suleiman Alede was still with uh, channels then, um, let's see, uh, Farouk Lawan. You will see how evil some of them can be. You will see how... About the report. Okay, you will see, this is Suleiman Alede. Look at how young he was, uh, nine years ago. Me too. So you will see how he played on the people. 
even then, the former governor of Imo State, Emeki Hedioha, was uh, the deputy speaker, and Emeki Hedioha presided over that time. So let's take a look and watch this. Of the Honorable Farouk Lawan led subsidy pro panel have been submitted to the House of Representatives is no longer news. But what is now news is the accusation and counter accusation between Mr. Femi Otedola, an oil marketer, and the panel chairman, Mr. Farouk Lawan, over a $620 bribe. This next report by our correspondent, J.J. Badamosi, chronicles some of the events leading to what could become the most sensational bribery case in the history of the National Assembly. We, we presented a report that to the best of our knowledge and to the best of our ability represented the work that we did. We he was widely considered a hero and the shining light of the House of Representatives. I recall when you made a presentation the other day for three whole weeks in the months of January and February, Mr. Lawan was the senator of all eyes as he pilots affairs at the subsidy pro panel. You see, the funny thing here is, while this was going on, everyone at that point was praising Farouk Lawan, saying how marvelous job he was doing. People thought he was fighting for Nigerians, but invariably he was fighting for his pocket. He and members of his team grilled oil marketers on ending hours in their bid to unravel the truth. This fuel subsidy. By April 24, the panel had concluded its assignment and placed this 210-page report before the entire House for consideration. After a two-day debate, some amendments were made and the report was approved. And shortly after, this is what Mr. Lawan had to say about the pressure he and his committee members Sorry, came I'm under. I'm not going to mention names or tell you who, yes, we had pressures. There are pressures from some of the marketers, equally putting pressure, most of them going through either friends or even some colleagues in the house. But we made it very clear. Anybody who is not guilty of anything should have no cause to worry. Does this guy sound like some people you know in government now? They sound like holier than thou. He's sounding as if, oh, people approached us. Oh, Kai, we are fighting corruption and people, everybody coming. We, is not going to, we are going to do the right thing. Gaskia, we are going to do the right thing. They are putting too much pressure, pressure everywhere, but we're not going to, we are not going to, but we are going to do the right thing. That's the way he sounds. Does it sound familiar? But, but over a month wrong, later, June 9th, please, to be precise, the whole story changed to dramatically. To Bologna oil magnate Femi Otedola bust the bubble. He alleged that Mr. Farouk Lawan had approached him, solicited and collected $620,000 as bribe money to remove his companies from the list of oil firms indicted in the panel's report. The $620,000, he said, was only part payment, as the actual sum is $3 million. Mr. Farouk's first reaction was complete denial, saying Mr. Otedola lied. But he has since adjusted that to say he indeed collected the money only to expose Mr. Otedola. <laughs> See, when, Oted when he didn't know that Otedola recorded the collection of that money, he said it's a lie. Otedola was just playing uh, pranks, you know, just talking blah, blah, blah. Eventually, the first video was released. When he saw it, like uh, someone in Kadun in Kano, whom everybody saw in camera glare, putting money right, left, and center in his bullion van Babariga. But when the president was in Paris and was asked what his opinion on a governor sitting in Kano using his bullion van Agbada to take the state fund. And the president said, well, we do not know the type of technology they used in making such videos. I said, well, that must be a canoe, uh, canoe wood because it's beyond Nollywood that such video by a contractor. And to today, again, that canoe wood is still there. Nothing has happened. So you can see, again, his denial I will play us the video also of 
the real video where he was collecting. The police is now investigating the whole affair. As for the two companies at the center of the controversy, we traced them to page 146 of the Farouk Lawan's panel report. Both Synopsis Enterprises Limited and Xenon Petrol and Gas Limited were numbers five and six on the list of oil firms that obtained forex but did not import petroleum products. The panel had recommended that the companies on the list be referred to the anti-corruption agencies. However, the two companies had their names removed from the list at the instance of Mr. Lawan when the House debated and considered the recommendations. Fortunately, we caught that on tape. And here's how both Synopsis Enterprises Limited and Xenon Petrol and Gas Limited got their names removed from the list on the advice of Mr. Farouk himself. My color. You see, in the, in, you know, sometimes it's good that these things are electronically documented. Because when we leave this earth, the fish you're looking at now as they will die one day. And probably my grandchildren would want to know how and what were the things that drove granddad. They will come here and they will begin to look at his uh, pattern of thinking, he, the way granddad looks and everything. And that same thing applies to them because we must all die one day. Now, Farouk approached the house without, and you know, the reason why he did this was because at this point, he had already met Otedala. They've agreed on a deal to remove the name of this company, Xenox, right? And he came back to the house. That's the next clip you're going to watch. He came back to the house, stood before everybody, even to the point that the deputy uh, speaker, sorry, uh, what is that? The, yes, the deputy speaker was, uh, was even, his reaction, will tell you that he was taken aback, but he didn't have any evidence at that time to challenge him. Watch. The chairman of the committee to give us a further brief on recommendation number 29. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, arising from the presentation, as I mentioned in my earlier remarks, there are instances where further documentation was submitted to us, and I want to recommend that uh, number five and six we were able to establish that number five and six were not on the petroleum subsidy scheme. So I want to suggest, I want to recommend that we amend this list and the amendment should be that the marketers who obtain forex but as amended who do not import petroleum products should be referred to the relevant anti-corruption agencies with a view to verifying what they used the forex for. I therefore move that amendment. You see? in the camera glare of everybody he there told them that this name will be removed and now oh that they didn't they were not involved blah 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 yet, yet. Honorable Farouk, i guess this is amendment coming from your committee you see this guy is now at this point was very shocked and look at his reaction interesting because you've not you see <laughs> so that this guy is uh, he said interesting Again, this is a Mickey Hedyer, the former governor of Imo State, whom the Supreme Court, um, the, whom the aeroplane drivers drove away. Hmm? Now, can we, can we therefore listen in silence mm -hmm. again to Honorable Farouk? Honorable Farouk, can you, our colleagues want to hear you once more? Mm -hmm. uh, when we made, when we came up with this list, we were guided by the list of those companies because our mandate was to investigate the issue of subsidy. So those ones that collect subsidy and did not utilize collected forex but did not import or we could not establish that they actually imported, we recommended that this should be further investigated. Our initial instinct was to ask them to refund, but we felt that we should demand for further investigation so that perhaps in the course of the investigation, it could be established whether 
that they actually utilize the forex for something else. Now, since the presentation of this, we have uh, uh, received further uh, information, just like in the case of one or two uh, other recommendations that we will come to, indicating that two of the companies were not a P on the PSP, PSF scheme at all. So we are recommending that we should amend this to only relate to those companies that were on the PSF scheme. My name is Jerry Manway. I'm from Taraba. Mine is uh, a further clarification on I mean, the names of the companies to highlight. Okay. I rise to second the motion, ably moved by the chairman of the committee, I so second. My dear colleagues, those in favor of the amendments as proposed by the committee and seconded by Rebu Razak say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. You see, the ayes have it. He, at this point, this was withdrawn. Someone is asking what is Otodala's fit. I think Otodala has nothing here because, because Otodala acted here as the whistleblower. So I think, uh, I don't know. Um, again, that's part I don't know what eventually will happen to him, but I think he acted as a whistleblower. If he acted as a whistleblower, then that maybe uh, it will be your sins will be forgiven. Now, watch the video of how Otodola gave him this money. This guy planted, this guy really did a great job on him. Planted this camera without him knowing, and he went in there. The cameras caught him. Watch. Why are we discussing with them? You're the only person I'm dealing with. You see, listen to him. He said, you are the only person I am dealing with. I am not going to discuss with the committee. So he's dealing with him alone. Watch. Thank you. He's there promising him, I will handle it. Handling it meaning he will take it out and he will convince the National Assembly and everything will be swept under the carpet. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't talk about this What you don't anything about it. They got a gun. No, 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 we have, Burion, uh, uh, we have Bullion Van Babariga. We have, I never knew that some cap can contain thousands of dollars, right? Some caps are Bullion Van caps as well. I don't know why I actually wear a cap that can't even contain maybe uh, 500 pounds or $500. But watch how this one will contain. <laughs> You must be putting under a lot of pressure. No, I'm under. Well, so I'm going to do it tomorrow now. Tomorrow, you know, I'm going to apologize for it. You see, this is the, that, the day he went and said, Oh, these were, these were, these two we should remove. Otadala was even wondering, then how are you going to do it was the question of Tedela asked him. He said, don't worry how I'm going to do it. To tell you, sometimes we just watch comedy at, in the National Assembly. Allow me, I will handle it. Reassuring Tedela that tomorrow when he goes into the office, he is going to convince the National Assembly to remove that. So this all that thousand now. Okay. So the balance will be two point five. No, two point five million. Yeah, that's okay. Yes, two fifty thousand. Two fifty thousand dollars. Two fifty thousand. Two fifty. Yeah, that's five hundred. So I'm going to have to cut it clean. I have to cut it clean. 
Ah, tout à fait, plein, hein. tout le monde, tout le monde, tout le monde. Pas du tout, c'est comme ça, encore du tout, pour que tout le monde. Ah, ça, tu veux dire, 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 tu you and I are here hungry, aching out, trying to make ends live, you know, make ends meet. And they are talking about our collective wealth from this from the south, from the old eastern region, from, from the south south of today. They are talking of how man, I don't want to get angry, man. Oh. 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 You see, you see how he distributed that. Honestly, I think having seen this and having looked at the the bullion van at Bada in uh, in uh, in Kano. I think we shall now be fearing anybody with Agbada because that Agbada can actually contain some serious uh, bank notes. See, he takes it, the bullion band, Chapam, Bagam. This is another person, you know, another person who come. This person also at that time was in the National Assembly. I can't remember his name. But look, watch him as well. Maybe if you, if you can recognize him, you can have him. I will finish the meeting and I will So, who's saying that if this is real? Or, this is real. Joe Chu, my saying, is this film or real? Listen, you don't know the country you're in. I told us we have archives. These are still in the archives, undeleted, undeleted. Hmm? This one. See? So he has collected his own. Now, let me quickly scroll down to where they had a telephone conversation. Though it's a little bit cranky, but let's see if we can hear much about it. He said, we are in the airport, in the aircraft. They are talking about how to come and collect the other money as well. And before they can come over now, unless I send somebody to the airport, I, I, can't, I can't, by the time they come, I should be in the chambers. I have a lot of things to do myself. Is there anybody you trust I can give it to? Or, you, or maybe I should just... You see, 080, I don't want to put this person into trouble again. So that I, after listening to me, says, okay, you don't copy this number and call the person to tell him to give you your own share. Because I don't. <laughs> okay, or do you want to, if you want the number, if you want to conflict the number because you want to go and collect your own share, then I will give you the number private. So people, that is the nation we call ours. But it's good that actually um, at the end of the day, though um, it took time for him to be sentenced, eventually he was sentenced and for um, seven years. What I do not know, because I, I, I remember actually uh, in 2015, he actually contested. I think he actually won. I don't know. 
I think he actually won, but he didn't win in 2019. So it, it means nothing to them. We know today people who ought to be in jail, but we, you and I, you watching me today, you celebrate them. You celebrate them. And you are uh, saying, oh, give us our nation. Give us our nation. But you are here. You, after chanting, give us our nation, you go and celebrate them. We saw how James Ibori stole money. The money now that is being returned to uh, 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 Delta. And Delta now saying, yeah, it is Delta state money. But when the federal government was pursuing that case, Delta said their money wasn't missing. They couldn't provide any document, any proof to say that this is money taken from Delta state. But the day the man was released from prison, the people of Delta, you people, you people, you una no try at all, una no do well, una no try, we're thin. This is what you did the day Buru was released. Shame, leave him. <laughs> Former Delta State strongman James Sibori there waving to the crowd of supporters that thronged his country home in Ogara to welcome him. It was a triumphant entry for the robo-born politician who established himself as a kingmaker and cheerful giver in Delta State before he went on exile and ended up in prison in the United Kingdom. The supporters that came out to welcome the former governor cut across ethnic divides in the state and their presence. Now look at the oppressed. Look at the people, these same people, your money was taken. This money was the reason why you don't have pipe bomb water. This money is the reason why your parents will die because there is no hospital to take them to. This money is the reason why there is no road. This money is the reason why the airport in Asaba was not done properly and it's falling apart. And all you can do is to celebrate. When the COVID, the initial COVID lockdown was lifted, the former governor of Abia State was also seen in Emo state when he landed on his way to Iberia. And people like this again came out. Everybody shouting, Your savior, your savior. When is your brain going to be reset that will begin to frown on these things? Isn't it clear to us that we are over concentrating on the federal government. We ask those actually clean us gradually, gently, gradually, bit by bit, are our siblings and our brothers, our sisters, our chiefs, our whatever we call them within our local locality. Things accruing to us, due to us, Yeah, that's normal. Whenever it's hitting, it's hitting them, somehow my internet starts playing up. But who cares? Truth remains that the truth must be told. Can we come, can we step down a little bit, move away from the, the so much federal government, yati, yati, yata, and look inwards? Does it bother you today that there is virtually no state within the southern Nigeria. Let's talk about southeast, you know, because it's always easy. Oh, the north, the north. The... Which states in the southeast today has local government election as at when due? Not all these caretaker appointed, where they give them 5% to 10% of what is accruable to the local government. Which state? Buhari is working. 
trying to make sure, Buhari is trying whatever he can to make sure that this separation happens, that federal, uh, this local government will be getting their own allocations. The governors are fighting it. And all of us are keeping quiet. Are we not part of the problem? How can we not hold our leaders to account within our vicinity? How did we somehow get this rank adede mentality? Some of them will say, oh, they will give us keke. Oh, they will give us a sewing, sewing machine, a constituency project, consistency project, Bukwa Onudia. And people are supporting this madness. People are supporting this. These things ought to change. These things ought to change. And having said that, then we have in another different video where Sheikh Gumin is actually arguing that federal government should get the bandits. They get uh, get the bandits to govern, or sorry, not to govern, to protect the schools. That we should use bandit uh, security to protect schools. Well, the idea might, might sound a little bit cynical, but here, this thought from the Arise crew. Aerial bombardments of the bandits and said it will only worsen the security situation in the northeastern region. He argued that the bandits are also victims as 90% of those who are in possession of sophisticated weapons use them to protect themselves against cattle herders. Well, in the meantime, the governor of Niger State, Abubakar Sani Bello, while commenting on the recent abduction, claimed that most of the bandits terrorizing the country are not Nigerians. Tundu, if you would recall, the governor of Niger State had only in a few hours traveled abroad when that situation happened in his state. They kidnapped about 136 uh, students from his state and he traveled abroad. Maybe he has intelligence or he has acquired intelligence to know that most of the bandits that are terrorizing the northeastern region are not Nigerians, even though the president said that they do know that they are Nigerians. But that's besides the point. My issue is with Ahmad Gumi. He keeps on going to the bandits to negotiate on the federal government's behalf. Now, his comment about bandits having to prefer to be security personnel than bandits making millions of dollars makes no sense to me. Millions and millions of naira. Yeah, his, um, Shigumi is quite consistent yeah. as the bandit whisperer slash bandit <laughs> apologist. And his latest suggestion is having the foxes guard the hen house. I don't know how much sense that makes at this point, but I think that people are so desperate they're listening to everybody. Hmm. He, I guess he has his own perspective. I completely disagree with it, frankly. As for the governor of Niger State, he's back with a bank. He was all dressed in his khaki, really like reeling out the marching orders and what have you with a whole group of vigilantes. I just hope all of that is not mere political theater. I just need those children to be released, the Tejina children. Mm -hmm. It's going on now for weeks and weeks. Yes, and almost then, a month we haven't now. heard anything. We haven't actually heard it's anything. Terrible. Apart from that, the, the um, ransom was reduced at some point. It's, I mean, maybe that's why Shegum is throwing out all these other ideas, because nothing else is I mean, is what is that idea, really? I don't even understand it, Dr. Abati. Well, first, uh, let me start with the governor of Niger State, Abu Bakr Sani Bilo. Yes, you uh, put your finger on it when you said that uh, shortly after the uh, abduction of the students of the uh, Salihu Tanko Islamiya School in Rafi local government area, uh, Tegina, uh, in, uh, in Niger, uh, Niger State. State. That was about a month ago. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that incident, the governor disappeared from the radar. We were told that he was sighted uh, abroad, uh, attending an event and all of that. Uh, although the, uh, author the officials, the subordinates, kept saying that they were in charge of the situation. The secretary to the state government even appeared on this uh, uh, station uh, to say that, look, he was the person in charge of the uh, arrangements and they were collaborating with the federal government. But many, many people felt that the governor should not have disappeared uh, from the radar. Again. 
people were kidnapped in your state. All you can do at that moment is basically run away. So question is, who will now hold him responsible? If the one that is at the helm of affairs disappears in action, when you wake up and hear that 250 people have been killed in Benue in one day, or that in one evening, on one weekend, over 54 or 58 people were killed in, Tara, uh, in Zamfara in one day, and the one that is the commanding, oh, it was again, CNC, Chief of Commander-in-Chief, the one who promised to lead from the front, but somehow, in the last couple of years, appeared to be hiding behind something. In all this, why won't the governor of a state do willy willy if the one that is that's promised to lead from the front has already willy willy? So it is a question of willy willy, because if we then ask the the you know our 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 Niger Delta people say. In this case, what are you going to do? It's not a question of enjoying the party, but it will now be a case of somebody the doing hour blue. From Niger Data Broadcasting Service, my name is Andrew Uweri Okere Ajakbasa. Yesterday, some angry, worried Jaguda boys carried dangerous weapons like a cutlass, iron pole. I went down to the Borikoko Oye facility. When they reach there, the security people vanish into the bush like willy willy. So when the security, when the security now vanish like the hour willy willy. From Niger. So the people now, you can see that. So security can vanish as willy willy. President vanish as willy willy. Here, the governor of Niger state also vanish as willy willy. There is... Given the very serious challenge the state was facing, over 42 uh, uh, communities in Niger State haven't been taken over uh, by bandits. One month later, uh, Governor Bello has suddenly shown up. And uh, well, I don't know whether to, we should thank him or commend him, because one month later, he has now visited the affected families to express his uh, commiserations. He has met with uh, security, a combined team of security agents uh, to help rescue the children. One month later, that's when the governor of uh, Niger State is... Now, one month later, you just imagine, please, please, let this did not be an abstract to you. Just imagine it. Your sister now, just imagine for one second, your sister, my sister, our children, we are kidnapped. We have a governor in a state. He didn't visit, he did no, nothing, nothing. One month later, somebody walks in into your compound. One month later, uh, uh, I hear uh, some children uh, kidnapped, and uh, I can feel your fans. I honestly, it's very, very unfortunate that uh, something like this can happen. Imagine if you get dagger for that house, what will you do? This is not kidding. So it shows you those whom you have ceded your power, you have given them the authority to represent you, are basically have willy willy. They are not there. They are missing in action. Starting from the top, starting from the aga as a, as a top, to the one in the middle and the, to the one in the bottom, everybody is willy willy, and it is sad. Honestly, it is sad. It is heartbreaking because you and I are not being treated as human the way we ought to be treated. That is the sad reality. But the, the saddest part is that you and I also appear not to be demanding, demanding enough to be treated as human beings. Rather, our, par our parochial sentiment, et ethnic, you know, sentiments sometimes and in most times appear to becloud our sense of reasoning. 
Sometimes, even in the Southeast, we talk about some certain things. Somebody, your argument will be, oh, yeah, but they are negotiating with bandit. And I ask myself, so because somebody has bandit, therefore I must create bandit. I must have my own bandit. But can't we begin to look at issues dispassionately and focus? Because our problem is very clear cut that we begin to tackle them head on. Suddenly waking up and uh, realizing that uh, he's described as the chief security officer of the state. How about that in terms of showing leadership, in terms of showing responsibility? So I think, you know, other people can analyze that and try to award the great uh, to Abu Bakabelo of uh, Niger State in terms of how he's focusing on the assignment that the people of Niger State have given him and how he's showing responsiveness and empathy and trying to be responsible. As that one, Nagrama, empathy does not exist. Not from the president to the governors, empathy does not exist. If not, how can somebody, you know, we cannot be, it's, sorry, it is insulting to be talking about this thing, to use empathy in the same line of sentence. Because empathy does not exist. Anything that is not about wealth accumulation, where we have even reduced ourselves, even outside government, all of us, is only, ah, ibutike, ah, let's, how to make it. Nobody talks about empathy anymore. Nobody talks about how do you help out. The society in which we grew up in is being destroyed before our own very eyes. And everybody is just thinking of how to just make money. Make money, make money. Will you even chop the... Will, I mean, yes, money is good. It, it helps life. But there is more to life than just... Take we're playing. Talk about money. Who are we negotiating with? Bandits? The same bandits that the governor of Kaduna, uh, Katsina State negotiated with and they had photo ops? And the next minute the bandits were back at action? The same bandits? How long are we going to keep playing with ourselves and keep continuing this game we play? This nefarious game of Russian roulette we play. It's How long? Smart. This is criminality. Mm -hmm. What it's you smart. do, you go in there, you end criminality, you bring them to book. Right. In the 80s, we had a criminal, Lawrence Omaja Kwanini, that evaded a lot of people, evaded the authority because they had a connivance with a police officer. What did uh, General, uh, G G General Babangida do? He told the Inspector General of Police, he said, where is Anini? Give me Anini. And in the end, they, they stopped it. They killed Anini. So what you do is you go in there, you destroy criminals. And Shea Gumi should stop this narrative of we need to talk to them. Shea Gumi, please. For starters, we are all disadvantaged. You know, I was telling my friends the other day, I said in all my years I've spent in this country, I can't look forward to one thing that the government of this country has given me for free. Only COVID-19 vaccine, the two jobs I took. And that's real. I've not You're gotten lucky. any public scholarship in this country. Exactly. I've me not too. gotten anything. Me too. So if the Sheikh is saying people are disadvantaged, me too, I can come out and say I'm disadvantaged. But we can't go ahead and say because we are disadvantaged, we kill other people. It is wrong. It's a criminal act. So stop trying to make that narrative like, oh, it's uh, what is it called? It, it, it's like the Niger Delta militants. Because I've heard that narrative too much, and that's not the problem. These people are criminals. You keep saying negotiate with what did the Casino State government do before? Didn't they negotiate with the bandits? Didn't the bandits start the attack even after the photo ops? Mm -hmm. What are the people what have the governors been doing all this while? Has it not been negotiations? So why can't the bandits too look and say, okay, let's have a break, guys. This is not good. But we don't see that. And you say we keep negotiating with that. That's also, how long are we going to continue this game of Russian roulette? How long? Well, that's a, a good question. Let's take another story. You know, I leave it at that because obviously he made excellent, excellent point. He made excellent, excellent point. You ask yourself, how long? Honestly, how long are you going to negotiate? How long? How long can this madness continue? Because, you know, it's, this is not a case of, oh, we don't have such in my place. Listen, 
is the, 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 the madness is everywhere. The madness is everywhere. And for those of you who don't know, uh, we have this for, for you. Um, the dot com nation, you know, this one go they paper them. Check it out. Here we have Senator Bariba. We are in his dot com nation, you know, dot com. So, my own, I've ordered my own this t shirt, very nice. The dot com nation, so it's a new nation. <laughs> DSS na joke I tell before I go con or before I go con back by me. Mm? But uh, I just said I'll, I'll share that with us because I found it very, very interesting. So, having said that, I'll, I'll let this finish so that you know um, they finish their thoughts, or rather, that uh, Rufai finishes line of thought uh, on these. Uh, some members of staff of Heritage Bank, in a video now circulating online, besieged the residence of former senator from Anambra State, Andy Umba. Well, according to the protesters, the former senator collected... It's Andy Oba, not Andy Umba, right? One thing this video will show you would reaffirm what I said earlier. Like George O said in Animal Farm, all animals are not equal. All animals are not equal. If you watch this video, you begin to ask yourself, they said this man owed bank. Rather than bank to use the legal process to go and get their money back, they resorted to protest. I am not against that they protested, but I'm more worried to what have prompted them to protest. That is, again, where injustice dwell. It means these people within this bank have been threatened to lose their jobs. Now, and that comes back to the meat of the matter in the Nigerian system, where senselessness is the order of the day. Why are we not worried about who negotiated this loan with the senator? Who? Who negotiated this loan and who signed it with what collateral? No, 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 nobody is interested in that. But suddenly people just want to go and protest. Now, once more, for those of you joining me this evening, if this is your first time of joining me, quickly and kindly, uh, please um, click on the uh, subscribe button, subscribe to this platform if you haven't, if you've been watching. And sometimes when I look at the back end, it says about 75% of people that keep coming back watching me haven't subscribed. And I'm like, what for? Do you hate me that much? Do you hate my face? You keep coming back watching my content, but you couldn't just click to subscribe. Have a now. Now, beggar the beggar. Okay. So kindly subscribe again. Because we're not streaming on, on Facebook this evening, there are some... Oh, I think probably we have come back. Oh, hold on. No, let me see. If we try... Let me try... Okay, we are not. We are unable to uh, stream live on Facebook this evening. But please, because of that, kindly share this video. Share this video, both on Facebook, on YouTube. Share to your friends on WhatsApp so that they can see the good work we are doing here. So... Now, I come back to what I was saying before. When you now see where, why someone should, will not be asking the right question, but people will just come out to say they are protesting. Let's watch this. That all manner of loans from the bank, which is impacting the ability of the institution to fulfill its obligations to depositors. Let's take a look at the video before we come back for a discussion. Senator Andy Oba has been owing the bank for a couple of years now. And... Um, we are here for a peaceful meeting with him, very peaceful meeting, to ask him to kindly... Uh, sometimes I don't understand Nigerians. So this one here, at the back of uh, uh, the camera, blowing grammar, saying we come from... Now, so they do meeting. Do you engage in meeting with placards? I won't be surprised that even Andy will now go and sue these people. But again, when you get to court, 
the bank would even deny it that we didn't even come to your house. Maybe there was a, it was a remnant of NSAS protesters and they can go on the street and arrest somebody. It's possible. We pay those loans because those are depositors' funds. And um, those monies, if they are not repaid, we throw the number of people you see here with their families out of work. And we know the situation of um, the economy in town. So if this number of people are thrown out of work, you know what it means. So we are here to appeal to him, the distinguished senator, to kindly pay this money so that... Um... Again, you see that, that mentality, why this nation can, you know, our, our, before we cure ourselves, it's a very long way. Someone is owing you, you're here protesting, and at the same time, you're still using the word distinguished senator. What is distinct? What is he, what is he distinguishing? I wouldn't hear. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to hear my His Excellency. And I'll ask again, what is excellence in the act? In the act, again, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. All of us have debt. Me, I get. I have debt as well. Even the debt self, it just swallow me. But it doesn't matter. Every month, you must keep paying. Any of you that has mortgage, you understand what it means that every month, whether you chop, you know chop, you sleep, you know sleep, you must pay your mortgage. So it means that any one of you in the diaspora watching me, many of you in Nigeria here who also have these monthly obligations, you have this debt to pay. But where it becomes criminal is when probably you're doing other things and you're, you know, you're not able to pay things you know you ought to. You ought to, and you're able to. This people will not lose their job. And of course, the bank becomes a going consign. Thank you very much. Well, so Tundra, I guess this is a questions. method they are using to embarrass the former senator to pay his loans. But there are so many questions here. And the first one, which is, how did he get the loans in the first place if he couldn't pay? Well, this is a thing. They're trying to shame him into paying. But that's not a novel idea. I've received text messages. Have you? Just somebody on your contact list such and such person is owing money, get them to pay. People put other people on blast on social media, and now we have picketing. Now to your question. I don't see why the staff is being made to do the dirty work. The MD should be there. If anybody's going to carry a placard, it should be the MD. <laughs> because whatever failure has occurred, whether in diligence or in something else, it's down to the managing director of the bank. And that's who's responsible to the board for avoidable losses. He has to account to the board for that. He should be there, not the staff. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel about it. But yeah, but Tundu, the, these staffs, I can bet my life on it. These staffs, we are threatened. These staffs might have even be those that are employed two, three years ago. Those who knew nothing. They were not even bankers when this loan was taken. Again, I think, I can't remember, was it Fai Oshe or who, who said it that what, the moment you win an election, that these banks will come to you. So they will give you credit cards that say you have a 500 million limit on it, credit card. They will throw all these things at you because your name is Excellency. So these are people, the bankers actually are the people encouraging Nigerians to steal. But now, when a Nigerian who needs this money will now go to the bank, give them brilliant business ideas, their problem will be, oh, this uh, grammar in this business ideas. You are not, which na, na grammar you go job? Can't you understand what the guy is trying to say? No, you won't. If at all you will, you will now tell him to go and get the, the middle finger of the dead grandma, uh, the third finger of the dead uncle, and uh, the... Uh, you know, go and get all the papers. Yo, ah, come on. By the time the person finishes, he can't even get the loan. Just maybe to get two, three million. And you now tell that person, okay, I'm going to give you 25% interest. Who does it? It is criminal. But hey, when it is those that have gone to win, either by selection or by winning election or by driving aeroplane, uh, by whatever, whatever, they've won this election, you issue them this thing, be following them. If they don't come for dinner, you will send all these uh, popoyish-looking popoyish, uh, girls to go and, um, you know, 
the man, uh -huh. if they say hi, so make it a go Zaza room. After Zaza room, the man will sign. So that's why the truth is not coming out. Like they said here, where is the MD? But rather, these are young graduates. You just put them on the streets, go and protest. I mean, it's just absolute nonsense. But for me, in terms of civility, in terms of optics, this is ugly. Very. It, it looks bad for the former senator. It looks bad for, for the, the bank. bank. Yes. And we have laws in this country. We all talk about, oh, the government this, the government that. But how do we, everyday Nigerians, conduct ourselves? Speaking of everyday Nigerians, they don't get loans from banks now, do they? And if at all they ever default, they're not going to be treated as nicely as so-called important people in society are. I'm sure there were so many phone calls, so many text messages. I'm sure they have begged and pleaded with the former senator before it escalated to this. Your ordinary Nigerian does not get that grace. But that's, I digress. Now we have laws in this country, although we like to act like we don't. Banking and other Financial Institutions Act of 2020, yes. yes. Section 102, creates a credit tribunal. What's wrong with that? Even last year, I remember on this show, we were having uh, arguments on this show, discussions about the new initiative from banks that if a defaulting borrower has an account in another bank, you can access that person's money. So there were issues of privity of contract and whether their rights have been infringed. There are other roots than this. It's right. undignified. I agree with you, Dr. Okay, Martin. Okay, this is a very novel approach to uh, securing of debts by uh, financial institutions. And I guess many Nigerians will be shocked that we now have a situation whereby bank staff will say, well, we don't want to lose our jobs, our families will be affected, and they will go to the home of uh, an alleged debtor and carry placards and say, this is peaceful. There's no way in which that was peaceful. No. Agaru uh, Ben, you'd not be surprised that when Andy Uba sues the bank, quote me, write this date down. You will hear unknown protesters. You know, today we have people killing each other everywhere in Nigeria. We say it's unknown gunmen. It is now becomes a catchphrase to say UGM. Hmm? You will soon have UPS, unknown protesters, with the S at the end. From UGM, who we'll joined to UPS. We already, during the time of Fela, when Fela's mom was killed, we already have unknown soldiers, US. By the way, maybe that is the reason why your, the country's name was about to be changed to UAR. Maybe it is unknown, unknown African Republic. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. Somebody wrote here, he John Atamu. What a joke. Honestly, it's not funny, but it's, what can you do? Can you cry? Because they were picketing the home of a banker customer. Is that what the rules say? Now, I guess if you want to take a loan from a bank, you know, you provide collaterals. The loans will be, on, will be secured. Is it that in this particular case, the loans were unsecured? That's the question. Where, it looks the like loan, it. Were the loans alleged? Were they given without collaterals? A bank also has the option of taking uh, a defaulting customer, uh, you know, or debtor to the courts. Now, why did they not consider that option? What the Heritage Bank staff have done amounts to a resort to self-help. Mm -hmm. Three, is the management of the bank aware of it? In one report, the bank said they were not aware of it and that this was uh, just this. You see, as if I knew, they would deny. Okay, let us pick our brain. In the comment section, what are the unknown things we have? Can you help me? Unknown president. The governors who ab ab abdicate from their duty, we have unknown governors. We have unknown government. We have unknown, unknown soldiers, unknown police, unknown protesters are joined. Hey. Staff are doing this. Now, if they're not aware of it, this is to what effect? The other leg of it is that recently the Senate passed a bill empowering Amcom, the asset management company of Nigeria, to go after assets that they can locate 
of people owing the banks who are debtors and then take control, seize control of those uh, assets. Many years back, we, we, we got to know that many of the people who put themselves out, and that's the popular side of the analysis, as billionaires in Nigeria, mm -hmm. are actually debtors. Mm -hmm. People who are doing big men on uh, other people's money. Same God. And who are not willing uh, to pay back. So, OG, some of these your so-called billionaires, they are really debtors. Which us. billionaires? I don't even know what is. <laughs> well, you mean okay. the ones on Forbes? Oh, oh, well, I'm just talking generally. I mean, I <laughs> However, by taking, by resorting to self, uh, yeah. uh, yes, Senator Andy Obab will have been, uh, you know, has been thoroughly embarrassed. Mm -hmm. He wants to run for governor in Anambra State. This may damage his yes, political fortunes. Absolutely. But this uh, who cares? He won governor once and uh, didn't uh, stay under Obasanjo. He was removed because uh, they stole the governorship from, obviously, the court removed him. Now, do you know my worry? And I want to anchor this here. My worry is, as my good brother, Dr. Damage, is always say, kafune fune de tua, fune daga, if with all this debt, somebody now comes into office with all this humongous debt and gets the key to the vote of a whole state. I want to leave the graphic details to you to imagine what a hungry goat will do in a yam bam where he comes in and oh, you have all these hefty, hefty yams and the goat is un hungry. I wonder what preachment and morality that goat would have not to do the call of nature. That's what I, that's the way I put it, the call of nature. As citizens, isn't it better and isn't it time that maybe as part of our responsibilities, we begin to clamor that as part of the electoral process, anyone, who is owing bank on serviceable debt? Not because debt, owing is not something bad, but you must be up to date with your debt services. I owe bank 10 billion. My monthly obligation is maybe 11 million. I must not default, or rather I must not be seen to have defaulted one or two months of that debt service. That must be. I owe bank 13 naira. I must not be seen that I have defaulted in paying my one naira 20 kobo every month. Because you must get to that point. If your name is maybe with Amcon that they've taken over your company, for Christ's sake, we must open our eyes that we should not allow such people to come into governance. It doesn't matter at which level. Because these are things that we should begin to take serious that if you want to come into governance, there should be a level where you begin to think, okay, what are the things, what are the consequences of my action? If not, just remain a private business, a, a private business person, but do not have keys to the coffers. It's as simple as that. This is a contractual relationship. Right. And I think the way the bank has gone about it, and I think that's the reason why the bank is saying it has no hands in it. Of course, you know, it's Senator Andy Uba is in a position to sue the bank for uh, okay. resorting to blackmail and, uh, you know, uh, unusual tactics in order to recover debt. And if he goes to court and he presses mm. uh, charges against the court, he may be able to win against the against the bank and those people. No, 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 Ruben, he cannot win. Ruben, you're a lawyer, you should understand this. The protesters are not known. The bank has already denied it's unknown, unknown protesters. So <laughs> we have unknown everything. Even a quam here says uh, unknown uh, the, uh, female newscaster with unknown natural. <laughs> so there are level. The level of unknown is it's it's enormous. So because it's unknown, it's, there is nothing you can do. But it is honestly, it is a who, trap. Who have gone out there to embarrass him? 
The real fear among the billionaires is that if the bank, heritage bank, gets away with this, then no billionaire is safe again. <laughs> because it could become something that other bank staff may the imitate. So, in, front of their house. in that regard, we, we may see <laughs> more dramas. <laughs> we may see more dramas Can you of that? this type. So, billionaires beware. <laughs> if you borrow money, beware. make sure you, <laughs> you pay. pay. I love it. Otherwise, <laughs> uh, the SS protesters will join bank staff oh, to come and carry placards. Only with the empty. <laughs> if you borrow, you pay. Oh, oh, this must go there. <laughs> I'll take our final story so you can comment on that. But Vice President Yemiyoshi Banjo has accused. Let me not bother myself with the next story because it's basically nothing. Now, I'll leave us with the following. I came across. I came across a video of. Um, a police officer crying. You know, it really touched me. He's crying during begging. youth of not oh. taking active roles Sorry. in the nation's uh, the, politics. The police, well, the police officer was crying, begging Nigerians to stop destroying their facilities. Again, this is worth transpired. Because I, I honestly, I, I mean, human, and this individual cried in this way. He said, Do you know? Did you hear what he said? He's, he's getting paid 33000 as a sergeant. Listen to that again. Is it 53000 or 33000 as a sergeant? Maybe 53000 Here, look at how they burn our teeth. Look at how many people have died. Nigeria, look into our problem. Nigeria, look into our problem. We are dying. No help. What are we selling this country for? Why? Nothing. Hungry service man. God is there. Thank you. Now, having said that, I can only say, I've called this, I've said this before, I'm repeating it again. 53,000 is nothing. Basically, it's less than $100, or rather about $100 in today's exchange rate. And that's what somebody has to leave for in one month. You give that person, a person you're paying 53,000, you give them an AK machine gone off over in the market, in the black market of over 1 million naira. And um, we expect them to behave normal huh? and they will stand in the sun. We expect them to behave normal. The whole thing is it's it's really abnormal. However, having said that, there is something again that worried me. There was an incident that happened in Enugu on Sunday, Sunday morning. A police officer was said to have shot five people dead. And when I read that, I thought to myself, okay, does it? I thought maybe that's a mental health issue. But somehow today, I started thinking differently. When someone, I read a news report saying that the police IG or the police authority has refused to name the name of the person who engaged in that act. You know, the moment I read that news, something struck me. I'm like, okay, that's awkward. Even when a police officer with uh, tear gas canister, as they said, exploded in a bony state, that same day, the name of the officer was known. The pictures was known. At least if you're trying to debunk something, you have a fallback. But I found it rather curious that 48 hours after the incident happened in Enugu, no one is picking up on that. I'm not insinuating anything, but again, I'm trying to use my sixth sense to begin to question immediately that I think maybe something is fishy. 
I read now unconfirmed, do not quote me on this, that um, the cover up, or rather the police is trying to cover up this because when the incident happened at the initial, that they were trying to blame it on, or rather let it fly as unknown government invading that Enugu suburb. You know, when I heard that one too, I said to myself, now oh, wow, nothing Musa no go here for this uh, gateway in there. You keep wondering, you know, you wake up, you think you have seen it all. You keep hearing things that, you know, you know, it keep, keeps shaking you. I wouldn't drive more on that one. You know, I wouldn't drive much deeper on that one. What I would rather do is that I will go back and see if I can get more details. But again, you all allow you all are aware that the Nigerian National Assembly, you know, so much money is being voted for, everything that happens there. And uh, but sadly, when it rains, <laughs> when it rains, everywhere becomes leaky leaky. Remember how many billions that was voted for the rehabilitation? Question is, was that rehabilitation refurbishment? Was it done? If it was done, I then ask, why do we have something like this happening? In the nest, something like this. In the nest, in the nest. So you can see everyone is mopping. If Mazi asks question now, all these people you see here, I wouldn't be surprised if they turn into unknown cleaners. If this thing turns even into unknown National Assembly, I wouldn't be surprised because this can be denied. But if you're looking at them tomorrow, somebody will come like Farouk Lawan and look you bare face and say, tell you, no, 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 no. There is nothing here. You think you're listening to Komiko Ali, the Iraqi general, when the US bombard, <laughs> uh, General Ali, when the US bombarded uh, Baghdad in the, in the, uh, in the nineties under, was it in the nineties? Yeah. No, in the, in the 2000s, the Gulf War, the second Gulf War. And uh, bombs we are dropping everywhere. Komika Ali, General Ali, will stand there and say, No, we are dealing with the enemy. The enemy has not entered Baghdad. We are. Sometimes when I, when I remember that, it reminds me of someone also that we have uh, here, too. And that person, again, without mentioning. Even my seven year old be, grandson uh, just look for yourself. called see me. For yourself. I said, Grandpa, Who am I tell me the truth. I do not Why know. Why did they call you Liar Mohammed? It reminds me. Liar Mohammed, Sunday. welcome to the Casboy interview. Thank you very much. Why would Twitter delete okay. the president's tweet? Twitter may have his own rules. Lai Mohammed, welcome to the Casboy interview. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Why would Twitter too. delete the president's tweet? Twitter president may have so... his own rules. It's not a universal rule. Why will he make such a statement? Are you not saying that Mr. President does not have the right to express his anger? But many Nigerians feel that. And as you all know, the president has uh, actually um, set up a committee to go speak with Twitter in order to unban Twitter. I thought before that they were saying they don't need it, they need coup or whatever they called it, the Indian micro-bloggings, uh, this thing. 
They went there to open an account, and I did ask them, now that you are opening an account, you are opening an account there. Is the one that you've just opened the account with, are they also paying taxes in Nigeria? That is the question. But somehow, you know, it appears they're beginning to notice that they really, you know, in Nigerian street parlance, they say someone effed up. They will begin, they began to realize that they really messed up because all these uh, drama going up and down, if not that they reacted the way they reacted, there is no way, there is no way. Um, if they kept quiet a day, two, three, everybody would have forgotten about that. But the way they've reacted now made it that everyone suddenly is beginning to say, oh, okay, why did this happen? Are you becoming a dictator? Even when Awoga, Awoga at the top would come and tell us that um, the grandchildren are asking. Even when my seven-year-old grandson called me and said, Grandpa, tell me the truth. Why would they call you liar, Mohammed? Uh, I can never be me talk. I'm uh, now you talk. I'm yourself. I didn't say if, now you said when my seven year old grandson called me and said, Grandpa, tell me the truth. Why would they call you liar, Mohammed? <laughs> so we will see again, people. Um, on the story on Enugu, I would um, endeavor to see what I can do, but at the end of the day, the whole scenario is really not encouraging. People, I try to see if I can... Okay, I, I, yes, again, on another story, we, we had uh, this girl that was uh, arrested during NSAS. Her crime was that she was protecting protesting for a better life, for a better future. She's been kept, she was pregnant then, think about one month plus pregnant then, and she was kept in prison to the point that she gave birth in prison. The good news is that uh, she was released today. Her name is Olakuta, no, sorry, uh, Kimisola, Oguni, NSAS protester, Kimisola, she was released today. But I found it also rather curious that uh, 10 million, uh, what's it called, bail condition and uh, with a short E. And I'm like, she's only 17. So, what crime? Protests. When has protest become a crime that someone needed to deposit 10 million in order to get her bail? I don't get it. Honestly, I don't get it. You know, it's just because of the, the little, little, um, little baby there just wanting to protect, protect the, um, you know, the little girl, that's why I wouldn't show the video. But if you want to see the video, go to BBC Pigeon. You will see the video of the girl because BBC Pigeon, I followed them today. They were live at the uh, place where she was, um, um, you know, where they, where she was granted bail today. So people, but let me see quickly before, if I can show us this, but just promise you won't cry. So I'll use this as a foundation and that will be my last presentation this evening. Then uh, we'll leave it for tomorrow until I have more details. Let me see if we can, if I can quickly show us this. 
the story of how the incident that happened in Enugu actually happened. It is indeed heartbreaking. It is indeed heartbreaking. Because when I saw it, I thought to myself, come on, how come? I don't know, a lot of things were, you know, the, the, the way the, you know, the story has it, the way the man was just going, deleting people. You know, a man was uh, washing um, something and they just went there, deleted the man, you know, a man sitting down washing cloth, just went there, deleted the man, went to the other place, just deleting without any, any form of resistance. And again, that's how five people lost their lives. And I think the least we should be requesting or we should be asking the police to do is to basically say, who is this person? Yes, we understand. You know, my initial thought would be, okay, this person in question appears to be a case of mental health, right? That is my uh, initial reaction that definitely this must be a case of mental health because if not, who go? Who does that? Who just goes, you know, deleting people just like that? And yet we find it very, very, um, you know, kind of, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but we find it so easy somewhat to not to reveal the identity of the individual. So I'll quickly get that video uh, across. So let's listen to this clip together. Um, share this clip with us. I'll give credit to BB Pigeon for for this. If we find out that this is the case, then we have to demand. Let me see. The video is called, I think it's in it. okay. So let me quickly bring that video here so that we'll listen. In our place, we say the snake where one person see the quick turn to Python. So I want to follow me see this, see this one too. Now, Black Sunday for Enugu yesterday, when some people just day for morning, constant waiting happen for this part of Enugu where they call Gulf Estate. We did live for Gulf Estate for. So this is Gulf Estate Enugu. For here, beautiful shit for you. Now here we want shooting happen. We want police allegedly shoot five people for this area. I shoot some people inside. The RC Loso office, where would they look like this now? As they look now, this place they call on the RC Loto office for Gulf Estate. Now, here where we say they get some shooting yesterday. The policeman where they talk say a very well people, nobody understand whether he gets a problem or if somebody vex him. But police don't talk say they investigate him. Even the governor for Enugu states don't reason the matter, don't go to the hospital, see the people where they injured, five people, now people where they shoot for this part of Enugu on Sunday morning. And so they hear the story, we say Mukairo now can't see waiting they happen for here. I will carry now go meet one of the women, maybe say she go bury her yesterday. And that yesterday, your husband just come and you know, you know, hear the gunshots, but you don't know where the gunshot they come from. As they come out, you know, to see anything where they happen, you say, okay, maybe go wear clothes, come out, go buy detergent, we go use wash clothes for in Peking, then we go go school today. Now, the wife will want follow talk this morning. Now, here where they get the uh, uh, gunshots yesterday, where people don't understand what they happen until they can't learn, say, they don't keep four people for inside the Lotto office. And now, uh, for just for front here, where they shoot. One man, where just go in one way, JJ made your bad detergent. May go use wash clothes for 
in Peking. Who wants to talk to a madame where we say go through this very terrible thing we happened yesterday? Madam, Madam, what can be your name? Okay, if you speak up small. Okay. Yesterday, you yes, said something very bad happened to your family. If you just tell us exactly what happened yesterday. Yesterday, around nine o'clock in the morning, Mopo, we do Mopo with the what they call it. Just wake up in the morning. Carry God. They see for um do not complain about the audio because that is the max the audio can go but what the woman just said is that in that little office the house on the left with bricks he said the mopo meaning for those of you who do not understand what mopo means in the nigerian parlance nigerian mopo is a military uh, sort of military police um that um you know that the guy was guarding that vicinity. And when they woke up, they just started hearing gunshots. Everybody in the compound, those people, those chairs where they walk inside that place, they just saw wind. They shoot everybody there. They don't see food. Food to come. They don't know what they were talking about. They can't come in there to hide the bullets. And the other women, so long story short the woman the woman said the husband and she pointed that the husband who was who came out put on his t-shirt came out looked at the police officer or rather walked towards the police officer to say ah i've been hearing gunshot what is happening because the man came out to buy detergent to wash the school uh, the uh, kids uh, school uniform to get them ready the next day being yesterday monday so that you know to get it ready and um, the guy he was about to question, ah, what's then happening? The guy shot him. That is it. So eventually, five people were deleted. About six people or thereabouts are in the hospital. Now, question is, why is the Nigerian police? That is now my own question. Why is the Nigerian police not you know, making or uh, letting us know the identity of the person who engaged in that act. Again, irrespective of what the identity will be, I honestly think that here there is, you know, because the act is abnormal. Is abnormal. You know, it could be, I don't know, I don't, but either something has, that has to do with mental health, post, post uh, 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 PhD, sorry, PTSD, post uh, traumatic test, uh, uh, stress or whatever disorder, you know, I don't know. Something must have, you know, cuckooed his brain to act and react in that manner. It is unusual, it is inhumane that someone reacts in that manner. And again, I say, may the souls of those who lost their lives rest in perfect peace. And on another video you saw, you know, we would see where um, a man, Umaru Mohammed, uh, who delivers um, 
walking sticks, you know, AK-47 walking sticks to, in his words, not mine, he says he delivers it to the headsman in the bush. And sadly, that I think that publication was done by in the media as well. Let me see if I can find it. Um, quickly, I will share that with you now. Oh, Yahya yeah, has been cons confirmed as uh, chief of army staff by the Senate. Now, uh, that one now. Uh, okay. And I do well. Uh, what's happening? I'm trying to um, open. Well, I don't, honestly, I, I don't know because. I don't know. It's 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 very hard for, you know, it's very very hard for us to speculate on um, on um, motive here. So let me quickly share this the last this last news. Then uh, people will call it a day. It's a Tuesday. So the reason why I want to share this is that I think I probably used the opportunity to call on the you know, on the security men to also pay attention to old cars. Because from all indication, it appears these old cars driven by old babas could be um, a loophole of, um, you know, a loophole of where people would think, oh, this is not going to happen. But that loophole is there and the loophole is being exploited. So in this case, you can see that here, this is uh, on gingermedia.com. Uh, here it says a photo, 60-year-old man nabbed after transporting ammunition concealed in his car to bandits. So that's the man here, right? 60-year-old. When he was asked, when he was asked, he said, you know, he, he they pay him 250, because I watched the video. They pay him 250,000, uh, 200 to 250,000 to deliver these things. In his words, he said, Omaru Mohammed, a 60 year old man, has been arrested by the police and he was caught conveying rifles and ammunition band you know, to, to bandits, to kidnappers across the north and southwest region using a special compartment uh, in his car. Here is what he was, uh, where he was uh, showing that to Frank Mba. As I saw that, he was showing that to the police uh, force uh, PRO, Frank Mba then, you know. And it's, you know, you know, looking at that, it's just that one of the things we have to do as a people, we need to be vigilant because a lot and the lot of evil is happening in our place now. We got to be vigilant. That's all. That's all I said. We have to be vigilant. On that note, I will say, people, it's been a pleasure having you all this time, and um, we've enjoyed our time, and we've, you know, basically reviewed uh, today's uh, happenings. I will say, join me, maybe tomorrow as well, as uh, we, you know, like I said, dig into more to understand. You know the things that um, just happened to see if we can get more clarity for someone who asked a um, question on Enugu International Airport. Um, I do not have, as of today, the opening date of the airport, but I have reasons to believe that September is still visible. Sorry, September. Please don't panic. July. That is. <laughs> next month okay so but afterwards i would have to probably go back and interface and see if the work that is delaying it if they have gained traction if progress has been made on that so please kindly subscribe to this channel if you haven't share this video if you you know if you may and that's at the same time um you know 
click on the bell icon so that whenever, because I think that's what we need to do because I believe YouTube is not suppressing counts. So, but if you click on the bell icon, whenever I come online, at least it will notify you that I am um, online. No, on your name, that's not July 2021, 2022. I mean, July next month. That's my personal projection when I think it might. But again, I don't, uh, I'm not the contractor. I can only go by the queries and um, information I'm trying to extract for all of us. On that note, I will say good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're watching me from. I am Mazes, okay. Peace out. <laughs>